Uh, let's start right here. We've uh, you know wiped the slate clean once again here in Texas. You see all the counties represented, and we're covering the big races. We've got the governor's race, which everybody is watching, of course, as well as the lieutenant governor's race, attorney general, ag commissioner, land, commis uh, land commissioner, and uh, congressional district 30 in Dallas, which you may not have kept up with as closely. Uh, this is going to be getting only its second representative in this district's history tonight. Uh, that is because longtime uh, Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson is retiring after 30 years. She's been in that district since it was created. Tonight, we will finally get a totally new generation who will be taking over there after she has been there for three decades. So uh, pretty impressive when we uh, think about that. Uh, let's go back out here to the state level because as Sonia said, not only are we going to be covering this and we can go, you know, from county to county, uh, looking at the different races here uh, and show you what's happening in individual counties. We can also zoom in, of course, and we'll be keeping a close eye on how North Texas is voting in all of these different races. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, we're looking at what's happening uh, across the state for the Texas House, the balance of power there. Republicans firmly in control. That's not expected to change tonight. Same goes for the Texas Senate, but we will be watching it, of course. Uh, we're also paying very close attention to the U.S. Senate, which is at a 50-50 right now. Doesn't take much to really change the dynamics there. Of course, we don't have a U.S. Senate race going on here in Texas, but we know that this affects a lot of people, so we'll be closely watching that. And then finally, the U.S. House, uh, as Sonia said, uh, Republicans only need five seats as a net gain to take control of the U.S. House this evening. Uh, so we're going to be watching that one very closely. And on that note, I want to step out of frame for just a moment here uh, and bring this up real quickly, uh, because we're going to be watching some of these races that are going on uh, down in the valley here in Texas. We've got three of them. Uh, this is Congressional District 15. You see on the left here uh, what the boundaries were before. This is the boundary after redistricting here on the right uh, after 2020. All of these districts have changed a little bit. You don't have to know everything. They basically stretch from South Texas, the border, all the way up to the San Antonio area. That's the 15th district. That's the 28th district, sort of does the same thing. And that's the 34th. Right now, Democrats hold two of those seats. A Republican holds one of those seats. Uh, both uh, parties would like to be able to sweep those three seats, and both parties have been trying really hard to do that. So what happens in South Texas tonight could very much affect the balance of power in the U.S. House of Representatives. So we're going to be watching that very closely. Uh, also keeping an eye on this. This is an interesting thing that has been put out by 538. Uh, this is deniers on the ballot, as they call it. And they say Texas has more of them than any other state in the country. Uh, people who have either uh, not commented on the results of the 2020 election or have uh, refused to accept the results of the 2020 election. So that's something we're watching closely as well. And, and again, of course, we go back to that governor's race uh, tonight. Uh, as it is, uh, Beto O'Rourke and Governor Abbott have faced off uh, in the same election before, just in different races. Uh, back in 2018, of course, O'Rourke going for the Senate seat and the governor defending uh, his office there. Uh, we're going to be watching all of these counties, uh, in particular the ones that both of them won back in 2018. They sort of split some of those. And so we'll be keeping keeping a close eye on that. Uh, but again, we're watching all of the races, and that includes the race for attorney general, which was the tightest statewide race the last time around in 2018. It has been polling uh, a little bit tighter than the governor's race this time again. Uh, Ken Paxton will be in Plano tonight, the uh, incumbent uh, attorney general here in Texas, and he'll be watching those results come in.